Question 1. A particle of mass 500 grams attached to one end of light rod AB of length 20 centimeters, which is free to rotate in a free vertical plane about the other end B. So you have this point B and you have a rod. This is A. And you have this mass over here, which is 0 0.5 kilograms. And this is 0 0.2 meters, the length. It's made to rotate in a vertical plane. It is slightly displaced. So what that means is it went a bit to the left or right. And the weight just made it go around like that. So with that in mind, let's go on to the next question. Calculate the speed of the particle as it passes through the lowest point of its path. So you have B and the rod A. And you have a mass. Lowest point on its path, as in here, when the rod goes down. So how do you find the speed? Well, you have to use conservation of energy, because this is an ideal question, so you can ignore any air resistance or friction, and you straight up just apply gravitational potential energy equals kinetic energy. So if you take the U equals zero as that, then you can use mgh, or you can just use mg delta h. So the gravitational potential energy turns to kinetic um, g delta h equals half um, v squared so v squared is equal to 2g delta h v is equal to square root of 2 times 9.8 and what's delta h? delta h is from that point where we measured the potential energy to that point where we are right now. So it's the length of two rods. And the length of one rod is 0 0.2. So length of two rods is 0 0.4. So times 0 0.4. So radical 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.4. And you should get that answer. Next one. Find the tension in the rod. I got a bit confused there because the 2 was outside, but it's just because the 0 0.2 is there. They didn't use 0 0.4 like I did. So find the tension in the rod. So basically, F net should be equal to the centripetal force. The centripetal force, you can measure it as mv squared over r. It's similar to the UCM, but UCM is constant. So you have the force, the tension about the rod. So this is at this point. This is point A, this is point B. So tension, and this is A. Then you have the word so T minus mg is equal to m v squared over r. V, you got it over there. R. So tension is equal to m, which is 0 0.5, times v squared. You got it to be square root of 2g so just times 2 times 9.8 use 10 in the exam and h is 0 0.4 over r which is 0 0.2 plus mg so 0 0.5 times 9.8 enter it in your calculator you should get it bt2 bt p threaded wire 50 centimeters and it's a vertical plane, so you know that it's no UCM. Or even if it wasn't a vertical plane, you'd need to constant speed. The bead is projected from lowest point, so it has kinetic energy here. Uh, apply principle of conservation of mechanical energy. You know what that means. Potential plus kinetic equals potential plus kinetic. Between points 1 and 2. Yeah. And to find the speed U for which bead will describe complete circles. So for a complete circle to occur, you'd have to have enough speed for it to go all the way up to that highest point, and then some. So, and then some is kinetic energy for you to go over there, a little over there. So you'd have the small push, and then the rest can be provided by the weight. So, conservation of energy. Half m u squared now if you take this as the u level then you don't have to worry about it where the potential is zero is equal to 
MGH so M G H plus half M V squared. Do some cancelling, do some substituting, you get M cancel, M cancel, M cancel. Multiply it by two, you get V squared is equal to U squared minus two G H. So we said that it needs a speed at the top, so V has to be greater than zero, or speed has to be greater than zero. So since it's squared, you know that this this whole expression is greater than zero. Now move the u, the 2gh to the other side, so u squared is greater than 2gh. Square root both sides, so u has to be greater than square root of 2gh. And that means greater than square root of 2, then times 10, so 20, and then times h, so 50 centimeters, so 250, because there's one up, one down, that's 1. So square root of 20, or square root of 2 times 9.8. What they did here is, the 2 is outside because you have the 2 from 2gh, but then they just use 0 0.5, so it's 2 of that. So 2 times 2 is 4, you can take it outside. So square root of 20, that's it. Given that u squared, apply principle to find the angle between OP and the downward vertical. Point 0.1 and 3. So half mv squared is equal to, or half mu squared, conservation, point 0.1 and 3, at the highest point of P's path. So highest point is where velocity is zero because of the height, so it can no longer go up. So there's no velocity, so all of it goes towards potential to go up. So potential is m g h. Now what is h? That's what they are. Uh, h. We have to use it in terms of theta because we need to find the angle. So h is simply delta h. So you have that point here and then you have this so h is the difference between there so half m u squared is equal to m g and then the difference so the first one the whole thing is r so 0 0.5 minus a smaller one so smaller one if you take that triangle where this is theta and this is the dotted one this is going to be 0 0.5 because it's the radius and then to get this you just do cosine so 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 cosine theta this is 4.9 m and m cancel g is 10 now you, you're all numbers except the theta of the cosine theta and you solve for it basic question 3 says a spring of natural length 75 centimeters in modulus 18 newtons is naturally compressed to a length of 70 centimeters. It is then compressed to a length of 50 centimeters and they want us to calculate the increase in energy stored in the spring. Now to find delta U or the change in energy stored in the spring, we need to do U2 minus U1. Now U is equal to half K X squared where k is equal to lambda or the modulus over the initial length and x is equal to the compression or the extension. Now u2 is equal to half times 80 over 0 0.75, make sure to convert centimeters to meters, times 0 0.25 squared. u1 on the other hand is equal to half times 80 over 0 0.75 times 0 0.05 squared. Now to find delta u, we just have to subtract the 2 and we end up getting 3.2 joules. Basic question 4 says a particle of mass 1.5 kilograms is hanging in equilibrium at the free end of a light elastic string of natural length 2 meters and modulus 16 newtons. The other end of the string is fixed. The particle is pulled downwards until the string has length 4 meters. 
they want us to calculate the increase in elastic energy. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the original extension. They mentioned that the particle is in equilibrium. That means that the tension is equal to the weight. We can thus derive that mg is equal to lambda over original length times delta L, which is the extension. We substitute and find delta L to be 1.8375 meters. They want us to find the increase in elastic potential energy. Like the question before, the increase is delta U, which is equal to U2 minus U1. If we substitute, we get that U2 is equal to half times 16 over 2 times 2 squared. And U1 is equal to half times 16 over 2 times the answer we got before. Keep in mind that the formula to find U is half kx squared and k is equal to lambda over original length. Now if we substitute, we will find delta U to be equal to 2.49 joules. Basic question 5 says a particle of mass 2 kilograms is attached to one end of a light elastic spring of natural length 160 centimeters and modulus 20 newtons. The other end of the string is fixed to a point O on a smooth horizontal table. P is released from rest at a point on the table 250 centimeters from O. Calculate the speed of P when the string becomes slack. So we use the equation U1 plus K1 is equal to U2 plus K2. Now this, the particle is released from rest, so K1 is equal to zero. And because the string becomes slack, there is no elastic potential energy for U2, so we can cross that one out as well. We get U1 is equal to K2. And if we substitute, we get half kx squared is equal to half mv squared. If we make v the subject of the equation, we get root kx squared over m. We can take the x out, and as we know, k is equal to lambda over L0, so we end up with this equation. We get v to be equal to 2.25 meters per second. B6. Particle of mass 500 attached to one end of light string of natural length 100 centimeters. So the natural length is 100 centimeters. So starting from B goes down. It's not till the A because A is it's not till that point. It's because that point has the mass attached. So obviously it will stretch. Find the length of the string in the equilibrium position. So you need to find this length. So, do you know the tension? Yeah, because it's at rest, so you can use Newton's first law, at rest, so this is the tension, this is the weight, they balance each other, so the tension, the magnitude of the tension is simply the weight. So, T is equal to mg, which is equal to the formula for elastic string, modulus over L0 into L minus L0. So what you need to find is the L over here. So mg, so 0 0.5 times 10, use 9 point, it will be given as 9.8 here, but in the exam it's 10, generally, unless they say so. So 5 modulus 5 over L0, which is 1, into L minus, that's about L, L minus L0, which is 1. So, so the one cancels with 5 and 5, so L minus 1 is equal to 1. So L is 2. So the length of the string in the equilibrium position is 2. GPE at position 1, using this as 0 GPE, it's simply MGH. So 0 0.5 times 10 times the length we found over here, AB. So this is 0. 
and A is there. So what was the length? 2. So 0 0.5 times 10 times 2. So that's 10. So 9.7 is because they use 9.8. Find the elastic potential energy of position 2. So elastic potential energy is half k delta x squared. K is modulus over L0, so half modulus over L0 into L minus L0 squared. So half times 5 over 1 into 2 minus 1 squared. So this is 1 cancels. 2 minus 1 is 1. So 1 squared is 1, so that cancels as well. So half times 5, so 5 over 2, or 2.5 joules the elastic potential energy. There you go. 2.4, that's 9.8 again. Use principle of conservation of mechanical energy between points of 1 and 2, which passes through the electrical the equilibrium position. So you have that 2.5 joules. Now you have 0 GPE. 0 GPE plus the elastic energy. So UG, which is the potential energy, gravitational, is equal to UE, which is elastic, plus KE. We need to find the speed, so we need to find half um, V squared, we need to find the V. UE is half, we found it, it's 2.5. Gravitational potential energy, we got it before, it's just MGH. So 0 0.5 times 10, 5, and then 5 times 2, so 10. So 10 minus 2.5 is equal to Ke, half um, V squared. So 7.5 times 2 over M is V squared. M is 0 0.5, so this is times 2 as well. It's half, so you put the 2 up. So 7.5 times 4, it should be 30. So V is square root of 30, which it means should be around 5 or 6, between yeah, between 5 and 6. 5.4. That's uh, BT7. Ali will do it. Basic question 7 says a train of mass 120 tons is ascending at an incline of 1 in 42 at a constant speed of 18 meters per second. If the power being exerted by the engine is 810 kilowatts, find the resistance to the motion. So we start by drawing an FBD, and you can see that the incline of 1 in 42 means that for every 1 meter in height, the train covers 42 meters in distance. We see that the x-axis is the incline, the y-axis is perpendicular to the incline, and along the y-axis we have the normal force in mg cosine theta, while on the x-axis we have the driving force mg sine theta and the resistance. The question mentions that the train is traveling at a constant speed of 18 meters per second. Constant speed means zero acceleration and that means that there is zero net force along the x-axis. We can then say that the driving force is equal to the resistance plus mg sine theta. We can make the resistance the subject of the equation. So we get R is equal to F minus mg sine theta. Now all we need to do is substitute. So we get that R is equal to power over velocity minus mg sine theta and we get that to be equal to 1.7 times 10 to the 4 newtons bt8 elastic string natural 4l so it was just connected here 4l and it was at rest so it wasn't going down or anything modulus of elasticity 4mg stretched between two points ab is 4l particle of mass m so remember capital m small m, capital m, small m, midpoint, 
with both portion of strain making an angle of 30 degrees. Calculate the length of AC in terms of L. So there's no physics involved over here. You simply take a triangle. And this is 4L, so this will be 2L. And this is 30 degrees. And then you need to find AC. So that's, you know, sine, sorry, cosine 30 is equal to hypot uh, adjacent, which is 2L over hypotenuse which is AC. So AC is 2L over cosine 30. So AC is equal to 2 over root 3 over 2. So that makes it 4 over root 3L. Let's check. Yep. Now find the magnitude of the tension in each portion of string. Notice that it's in small m. So you can just, you know, balance T so far. You do that next part, but small m, so you have to use the elasticity because that's the only point where it says it. So T is equal to modulus, so 4mg over L0. Now, what's L0, you say? Well, we just want the tension for this part of the string. So what was it initially? Initially, it was this, this much, which is half of AB. So it was originally 2L into something. What's the something? It's L, it's delta L, which is L minus L0. So minus L0, which is 2L. And what is L? It's AC, if you can look at it. You had L here, and then you have the extension because of the mass, because of C. It's pulling it. So AC, we got it to be 4 over root 3L. The L and L cancel, and you're left with 8 over root 3 mg. And that is what you're supposed to get. Let me check it. Okay, that is correct, it seems. It looks so far good. Calculate M in terms of M, small m. I'm just making sure of this part here. It's about I'm fuzzy about. So 4 over root 3 minus 2L. Yeah, it makes sense, sorry. So see, calculate mass M. Now you have to deal with this M. So you draw the free body, you have tension, tension. And you have the sign, you have this sign. Okay. So, since it's symmetric, you know that t's are equal. Use the y-axis over here, the y-axis. You get weight is equal to 2t sine theta. The sine is because you need the vertical portion, so you do sine. The 2 is because there's two of them. And they add up together like normal. So sine 30 is half and then it cancels with the 2 so T is equal to M capital G now find it in terms of M so you have T is equal to M capital M G which is equal to 0 0.61 3 whatever mg g and g cancel m equals 0 0.61 m or 6 to m 6 point here you go and that's how you get it uh, part d find the elastic energy stored okay so you have two portions and you can just calculate it by multiplying by 2 times whatever you get of one portion so 2 times half k, which is lambda over L0. So 4 mg over L0 is 2L, because we're just taking one portion. That's the original length. Into what we got, so 4 over root 3 L minus L minus 2L, sorry. And then square it, 
because this is energy, so delta x squared. You do the math, you put in your calculator, you'll see that L and L cancel, but it's squared, so you'll end up with MGL as the variable or the constants. And then you put in your calculator, you get the number, and you should end up with 0 0.191. Next one, B9. Find the work done in stretching a rubber band around a roll of papers. Okay, you have a roll of papers, and then you have a rubber band. Don't think of it as a circle, just think of it as an elastic rod, and then stretch like it. So if you can do that. Now, unstretched will go around a cylinder of radius 2. Basically, what's that telling us is L0. Modulus of elasticity is 0 0.5. Work done. It's half. K, which is modulus elastic over L0, 2 pi 0 0.02, 2 pi r, into the change in length. So it's stretched into a circle of radius 4 centimeters. So 2 pi times 0 0.04 minus L0, so 2 pi times 0 0.02 put it into your calculator and you get 0. Point, you get pi over 100 which is right there 314 over 100 and that is B9 in basic question 10 we are told that an elastic spring of natural length 1 meter and modulus 16 newtons rests on a smooth horizontal floor with one end fixed and a particle of mass 2 kilograms is attached to the free end of the spring, which is compressed to a length of 0 0.75 meters. The particle is then released, and they want us to calculate the speed of the particle when the spring returns to its natural length. So again, we use the formula U1 plus K1 is equal to U2 plus K2. Now the spring returns to its natural length, so x squared in u2 would be 0, so we can just cancel this one out. And the particle is released from rest, so we can cancel k1 out. We get u1 is equal to k2. Now we just have to substitute the formulas. Half kx squared is equal to half mv squared and make v the subject of the equation. We get v is equal to x root lambda m l zero, just like in basic question number five. And if we find v, we get it to be 1.37 meters per second.